Welcome to Well, 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 where I take you on hydrogeologic tours of Texas, uh, and often involving wells. Today we are going to Marlin, Texas, which is uh, a bit to the uh, southeast of Waco. And Marlin was known as the hot mineral water city of Texas back in the day. So the city of Marlin in uh, 1891 um, issued bonds for $25,000 to drill a well to um, get an artesian flowing water supply well for the community. And they drilled a well um, 3,330 feet deep. And indeed they hit flowing artesian water um, from the Travis Peak Formation, um, also known as the Trinity Aquifer. Um, however, it was not fresh water that neighbors to their east, including Waco, had drilled and gotten fresh water. Instead, this water um, was pretty brackish, right at around 10,000 parts per million. Uh, somebody walked up and sipped it and said, I'm cured. And so uh, people would come from miles around to partake of this mineral water that had these uh, mythic um, properties uh, to um, um, be medicinal and, and solve your issues. Really what it did was it just cleaned you out. Um, several more wells were drilled, and uh, this is a postcard from my collection. I'm going to show you more that uh, of, of hot well number two. Also, I should note that water came up somewhat hot, uh, 147 degrees Fahrenheit. The flow from the wells would be redirected towards fountains, and this is uh, the fountain for that well number two there. You can see here's well number two in a postcard circa 1912, um, where people could uh, partake of the water. This is the fountain that was placed on top of hot well number one. You see a bunch of folks hanging around. Um, a few years later, the hotels got bigger, and the pavilion itself changed um, into a more solid structure. Sadly, all those hotels are now gone. Uh, there's a more modern motel on the far side. But fortunately, the pavilion is still with us, as is the well. So here we are walking up on the pavilion across the railroad tracks. We're crossing Coleman Street. And if you're, you're looking for this, it's at Coleman Street and the railroad track that's not on the main drag. And this is uh, not the original pavilion, but, uh, but definitely an old pavilion in one of the last few, few remaining pieces of architecture left from the heydays of these mineral waters. And uh, you know, drilled in 1892, they were looking for a water supply, um, and instead got this. Um, this water is brackish, and then it actually crosses in the saline. It's about 10,000 parts per million, uh, so it's it's pretty tasty. A lot of sulfur in it. Uh, you know, about half of the total dissolved solids is sulfur and uh, yeah this this uh, historic fountain here connects back to a well and nearby there's some murals you know commemorating the uh, the fountain um, there it is the fountain of youth 
Um, this was a big resort that people came to, to drink this water and cure their ailments. Although really all it did was give you the green apple trots. A number of hotels were built in the area. Most of them sadly are gone, but this uh, Hilton Hotel is still there. Um, it's for the most part abandoned, but there's some scaffolding on it suggesting that someone is fixing it up. There's also a historic marker here. There was a tunnel that went underneath the street to the sanitarium across the street, which is now gone. Beautiful building, sadly burned down in the 90s. Uh, but people in the hotel could then go over there. Not mentioned here was that uh, Hilton actually wound up selling uh, this hotel and his other hotels uh, hit hard by the depression. Around the corner, there's an old theater as well as a museum that was sadly closed when we visited. And uh, I'm, I am always game for a creepy mannequin. Um, they're taking tickets, always waiting for you. So inside the well house, which uh, you can see is in pretty poor shape, is the original well with a concrete cover. Uh, there's some modern plumbing that hooks it up to the fountain we saw earlier, and then also uh, plums into a sink just on the outside wall to the right. You can just see all the, the minerals uh, crusted up on this thing. Just super cool that this is still here and available for, for people to visit. Generally, the door is not open like it was. I think they're doing some plumbing work back there. Uh, here's uh, kind of the original plaque, how many gallons it was flowing, drilled in 1893, 3,350 feet deep, 147 degrees Fahrenheit. And here are the, um, one of the early uh, analyses of the chemistry. Um, these faucets are a little, a little crusty and corroded. Uh, they probably have to be changed from time to time. This particular faucet is going into a clear glass and the locals know that uh, if you expose clear glass of this water for a period of time, it will actually discolor it um, from, from all the uh, dissolved solids that are in this water. Yep, it's pretty salty. Um, I, you know, it turns out my tongue is not as sensitive to salt as others. I think others would be like, holy cow. You know, for me, it's like, yeah, it's that's good pasta water right there, 10,000 parts per million. There's this cool foot bath uh, that you can partake where people would soak. And you know, the hotels had, had pools or tubs where you could soak in this water and benefit from the sulfur fumes. If you decide to do this, turn the water on in the sink. You saw a sock up there that you can, you can stuff in a plug hole to fill this thing up. Faucets in the sink drain into the foot bathing tub. Yeah, it's, it's quite cozy. Now it was like 93, 94 degrees when we were there, and, and uh, water sure didn't feel like it was 147. Um, but, uh, not exactly the best day to be soaking your feet in warm water, but Still a lot of fun to partake in some hydrogeologic history and uh, you know, smell that sulfur, um, enjoying a artesian flowing well. That was such an important part of the state's history way back when. So, so cool. Mm -hmm.